What's up, Pro Guides family? It's so great to see you guys again. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be the host of this video. I'll run you guys through a preview of changes that are coming next patch, but note that some of these changes are taken from the PBE and are subject to change. Make sure to subscribe and let's jump into it. To start off the list of changes, we'll go over the system adjustments. One of the big targets of the next patch is sustain. As a result, Vampire Acceptor as well as items that it builds into are up for some nerfs. The amount of lifesteal in items like Bloodthirster, Immortal Shieldbow, and Blade of the Rune King will have their lifesteal reduced. However, Immortal Shieldbow will have some power added to its mythic passive, granting players more health with each legendary item completed. This theme carries over into the runes as well. Fleet Forward will have its healing ratios reduced. On the other hand, the rune Legend Bloodline will now grant bonus health at max stacks. Although it's expected to also receive a reduction in healing, it's expected to receive some sort of compensation, which should make these upcoming nerfs a little less punishing for squishy champions. The biggest upcoming change is the removal of an iconic rune, Ravenous Hunter. One of the most popular runes, its removal will certainly shake things up. A lot of us are so used to taking it every single game because it's at least decent in nearly every game. In most cases, it's strong or excellent because it allows any champion to access the same. Ultimately, it was problematic as it was a universal rune that way too many champions could abuse. After all this time, Riot is planning on replacing it with a much riskier rune that players can take in its place. That rune is gonna be Treasure Hunter. It'll be in the same tier as Ravenous Hunter, meaning that'll also encourage players to pick up stacks from champion takedowns. As the name suggests, it'll grant players bonus gold the first time they get a takedown on an enemy champion. The bonus gold should add up and allow players to snowball off of early leads if they can pick up enough unique takedowns. Tentatively, getting every stack will grant 550 extra gold, so interpret that however you like. Without a doubt, there is a big risk to taking this rune. If you're unable to pick up any kills or assists early, you're basically just sitting on a dead rune, while your opponents might have taken one that provides some immediate combat power in the early game. That's it for the system, so let's talk about the champion changes next. So far, we don't have too much information about the upcoming champion changes. However, we do expect a bunch of changes for Rangark to be live on patch 12.6. These have been in works for quite some time, especially because the latest season's changes to Summoner's Rift have had unexpected effects on its performance. The upcoming adjustments are intended to only have positive effects for Rangar, meaning that he's getting buffed. First, his ferocity falloff time is being increased by 2 seconds, giving players a bigger window to stay in combat. That's not the only case where timing will be more forgiving, however. His bone tooth necklace forgiveness timer is also being increased, so players will have an easier time maximizing his strength. A quality of life change is that timing on his leap will be more consistent moving forward. In most cases, this change alone would end up hurting Rangar, so his range when leaping will also be increased slightly. There are also other quality of life changes including the fact that his jump height will also be slightly increased and that his secondary resource bar will denote stacks as well as which one came from his leap. Next is a change for his Q. Rengar's Q will always count as a critical strike and convert each percent of critical strike chance into one damage. It'll also work on towers, making it more forgiving to use and also allow him to pressure turrets harder than before. At the end of the day, this change is the most important one because it'll also set up the foundation for future balance changes. By making it so Rengar always crits, low crit builds won't be as risky as before. Rather than praying for a crit to one shot, the damage output will be more consistent. In addition, if crit chance builds end up being more powerful in the future, Riot will have a way to directly just adjust it. His E is up for some huge buffs as well. First, there will be no cast time when leaping. This is a gigantic change and will make the ability much more threatening than before, especially against immobile enemies. In addition, it will reveal its targets for 2 seconds. The final change will be on his ultimate. Rather than revealing only his target, it will reveal a small area around them, providing Rengar much more information than before. He will also be able to jump in with a little more information, and even if minor, it's still a buff. There are a couple of minor changes that we can expect as well. One is that Hecarim's E damage is expected to be reduced. If you've had trouble dealing with him, some minor relief is on its way. Finally, Nidalee is expected to have her W and E's mana cost reduced as well. Not the biggest change ever, but experienced Nidalee players might be able to produce slightly better results than before with the buff. With all that covered, we finish our 12.6 patch preview. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know if you have any feedback. Make sure to stay in touch with us and join our Discord if you want. You can find the link for that in the description below. Take care everybody, and we'll see you guys in the next video.